Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Boy, do I have something awesome planned for you guys. Stay tuned. So I did have an in-person intro for you guys on this video and another video. However, me being me, I deleted it by mistake. So I just came out and shot this replacement really quick. And I'm not going to keep you in suspense because I am going to bring this out so that you can see it while I describe what it is. Y'all know that we have been crafting with vinyl placemats that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I heard from so many of you that you wanted a larger tote. And that's exactly what we have here. We have a large tote using two of the 18 by 12 inch placemats from the Dollar Tree. What we end up with is a bag that is 13 inches wide, nine and a half inches tall, and two and a half inches deep. I am just going to bring in that overhead shot so that you can see that we do have a large, large bag. So large that I can take my hot glue gun, place it on the inside, and still have plenty of room to put so many other Items. This is a super project and I am so excited to be bringing it to you. I love how this turned out and I know that those of you who choose to make this, you are absolutely going to love it. So whether you have a Dollar Tree in your area or you have another store where you can purchase vinyl placemats, go in, pick out some that have really cute graphics on them and make one of a kind totes. These would make great gifts great craft fair sellers, great sellers for your Etsy store. Y'all know what time it is. It is time to make this. Making this could not be any easier. We're going to need two 12 by 18 vinyl placemats. And then I have two strips that I cut from another placemat that are 18 by one. These are going to be my handles. And then I will be using my double-sided tape. I'll have a link for that in the description box and I will be using my metal snaps, and I'll have a link for these in the description box as well. Y'all, when I say easy, I mean easy. So I'm going to place my mat in my scoreboard on the 18 inch side, and I am going to score at two and a half. Rotate it to the opposite 18 inch side and score at two and a half. Then I'm going to take this make sure that I'm scoring on the bottom and I am going to score at two and a half as far as I can go then I'll just flip it score at two and a half until I meet that original two and a half inch score so this is what we're going to have we'll have three scores two on the side one on the bottom and then we'll do the exact same thing on the other one so we're going to score at two and a half on three sides and then we'll score at two and a half on the bottom and then I'll flip it and go to the other end on the bottom scoring at two and a half until I meet that original two and a half inch score and then I'll go to the other side on the 18 inch side and make my third two and a half inch score and then using my finger blade on one piece only I am going to remove those corner pieces all together. And I'll angle in just a little bit, not a lot. And so I have the side pieces removed on that one. I am going to bring this piece in and this time I'm not removing the side pieces. I am just going to cut in this direction. So I'll go to the score and cut. Then I can angle and I'll do a slight angle there. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll go to that score, drag it straight out then I'll angle and I'll angle here and now I'll just bring in my big old spatula 
and I'm going to go over the score marks that I made. Alright, so once we've gone over those scores, we are going to take the piece that we notched out the ends on and we'll be placing that down. So when we place it down, we'll be placing it down on this piece just like that. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to place mine down using tape, my double stick tape. And I'm going to be placing that tape on both pieces. And if you want to make this project and you want to experiment with other adhesives, you can. I'm using my tape because it has proven to work for me. And so that's what I am going to stick with. So I have my tape on that. The piece where you have the tabs, that is going to be the front of your bag. So what that means is you're going to take tape and place tape on the inside of those side panels. So I am going to take my tape and I am going to place my tape down on this piece. And then I'm going to take a thin strip of tape and just place it down the middle because I want to make sure that I have good tape coverage. I'll come to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. And we'll place a piece here in the middle and then we'll take tape and place it along the inside on, on that middle bottom section only then we're going to flip it over and we're going to place some tape on these flaps so you can place your tape however you want I'm just going to place two pieces, making sure that I am not on the score mark. And then I'll come over to this side and do the same thing. So I am just going to place my tape. So to recap, on the piece where we left the tabs, we are going to place tape on the outside of those two tabs. Then when you flip it over, we're going to place tape here, here, and here. No tape there. And then we'll bring in the piece where we actually did cut out the bottom. We have already placed tape on the base of that. So we're now going to take just a couple of strips of tape and we're going to place it on the inside of these side panels like this. And we're doing this because we want to make sure that we have a good stick on all parts of this bag that we'll be joining together. So we're going to put that right there. And so that is how it should look. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to place our tape on these two flaps on the end. So I am going to take my tape, I'm going to place some tape right there, and then I'll place some tape right here. I'm not going to come all the way to the edge, just in case I have a little bit of a gap. I don't want it to be sticky. Then we'll flip it over, we'll do the same thing over here. And then I'll place my last piece of tape in 
and by using this tape, this is a pretty good construction method for this tote that we are making. The piece that we notched out the sides is going to look like this on the front. And then when you flip it over, you will just have tape right there. So now we're going to take this and we're going to put it together by joining these two pieces together. So I am going to remove my tape from that piece and then I'll flip this piece over and I'll remove my tape from this bottom piece. So you want to make sure that when you're placing it down you try to get it right the first time because you don't really have any wiggle room and if you have to pull up the tape you can but it's a little bit of a struggle but it can be done so now that we've laid this piece down on top of this piece this piece that we placed on top is the back of our bag so when we bring it up we're going to bring in that tab and we're going to join these two together and you'll know they go together because you have your tape here that you want to meet the tape there so I'm going to peel away my tape and then I'll bring this piece over and get it matched we really don't have any wiggle room so when you match it it's pretty much stuck and then I'll remove my tape from this piece and then we'll go ahead and take this piece and match it just like we did on the other side get that nice and stuck. So now we can take our bag and we can tell how it goes because you want to match tape to tape. So we're simply going to match these pieces. I am going to remove my tape backers. All right, so I have my tape off. And I am just going to make sure that I have that side folded into its natural crease. Then I'm going to take this piece on the crease, bring it up, and bring it over. And I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I am going to remove my tape. And then once I have the tape removed, I am just going to fold that in to get my natural crease going on that fold. And then I'll just place it down and I'm just going to hold it a little bit. And then I can bring this piece up and over to get a very good match. So I am going to use my big old spatula. I'll go on the inside and make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. And you can see what a deliciously gorgeous bag this is going to be. I was telling my sister that of all of the placemats that I've worked with, I don't know, it's just something about this character and he's appeared on three different styles of bag. It's just something about him that I absolutely love. So these are turning out to be my favorite bags to work with. Leave me a comment below and let me know which of the placemats you've seen me use is your favorite. All right, so now we're going to bring in our handles and I am going to place tape on my handles and I'm placing that tape coming up about an inch and a half. How far up you want to come with your tape is completely up to you, but I am coming up about an inch and a half. So once we have that tape on there, we're simply going to remove that backer sheet Now I'll bring in my bag. 
I'm going to stand this up to place my handle. So I am basically just going to take the handle, find wherever I want it to be, and we'll stick it down. I'm going to move that in just a little bit. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing over here. So I'll stand it up, put my handle in, and then before I lock the second handle into place, I'm just going to test it to make sure that the two handles are the same height, and they are. So now I can add that one. I'm going to go on the inside with my big old spatula get that nice and stuck and y'all we have a beauty of a bag it is absolutely gorgeous so i am going to bring in my screws and i am going to use these to reinforce my handles so i am just going to use my paper piercer and i am going to punch three holes per handle and i'm just eyeballing it but if you want to be more exact you can actually use a template. Then once I have those holes, I am going to use my larger tool just to go in and place my little metal rivets or, or snaps. I call them snaps. I think they might be called rivets on the website, but I like to call them snaps because they just snap together. And I am just going to put these down. I'm going to do this side of the bag with you guys and I'll do the other side of the bag off camera. So I have put in three of the pieces that have that little prong. Then you're going to have these little heads and all you have to do is take the head and place it on that prong and you'll hear that snap. Now I don't have my little mallet with me but I will actually be using the mallet to definitely tap those in for a permanent, permanent joint. So I am going to do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to widen that hole just a little bit Take my snap, put it in, do the same thing up here. And do the same thing here. And now again, I'll take these little snaps, put them on. And you can see just how gorgeous that is. And yes, it's beautiful, but it also serves to reinforce making sure that that handle stays on. So I am going to do the other side and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we have our snaps on front and back. And don't you just love this jumbo size tote? So the final thing that I'm going to do is I am just going to add a reinforcement piece of chipboard to the bottom because if you do put something in there of weight we want to make sure that, that bottom stays intact so I am going to bring in a piece of my scrap I have added some double stick tape to the back of a 12 by 2 and 3 8 inch piece of chipboard I'm going to place that down on that vinyl and then I'll just trim it And I don't know about you guys, but I am having a blast with these placemats. I had no idea I would enjoy working with them so much, but I do. And there are just so many fun things that we can make and we can make them useful, but we can make them inexpensively. So I am just adding some tape. So I have added some double stick tape to the back and I am just going to take this 
and place it on the inside. And that's just going to give me some added stability in the bottom of this bag so that if I choose to put something of weight in there, I won't have any problems with that weight not being supported. Guys, and there we have it. This is stunning. I wish you could see it in person, but you will, because if you find these placemats, you're going to be making this and you're going to fall in love. Again, I'll say it, if you have an Etsy or if you're doing craft fairs, this is such a unique item. Just imagine this, you're doing a craft fair and you really want to increase the sales in your booth. Well, if you have an item like this either for sale or it is the bag that you offer for free when a certain purchase amount is reached, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how something like this can drive up sales. So I am going to bring that first one back in. And y'all, I do apologize for the glare, but I do have overhead lights and they catch the glare on this vinyl. But these are just absolutely gorgeous bags. I cannot say that enough. When you make them, you're going to be saying the same thing. When you finish it, you're going to look at it and say, wow, I made that. So I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome vinyl placemat project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye. Thank you.